the breaking news in Southeast Portland where a SWAT situation is unfolding after a reported shooting. You're taking a live look at Southeast 136th Avenue near Ramona and Knight Streets. As you can see, there's a large police presence responding to that scene. Police tell us the suspect they're looking for is armed and dangerous. Thanks for joining us for today's news at noon. I'm Ashley Grams. Let's get right to Blair Best, who's live at the scene. Blair, what can you tell us? Ashley, a woman was shot just after 830 this morning here off Southeast 136 Avenue. It's a residential area with a school a few blocks down and Portland police are actively searching the area for a suspect who they say is armed and dangerous. Take a look. Here's the scene. It is still very active as police search people's backyards for that suspect. Dozens of police cruisers are here. Drones are in the air along with a special incident response team. Now the woman who was shot is currently in the hospital with critical life threatening injuries and we just spoke with Portland police. Here's what they have to say. We believe that that person um, is still potentially armed and potentially in this area. So we're taking every precaution to track down this individual. All right, now this situation is unfolding as we speak. We see family of the victim are here along with outreach workers. If you live in the area, take caution. We'll keep you updated as soon as we learn more. Back to you. Thank you for that live report, Blair. We'll be waiting for more information today at 4. Well, now to Portland Fire and Rescue responding to a house fire in the Montevilla neighborhood. You're looking at the emergency response from a traffic camera on Southeast 82nd and Washington. Let's get to Thomas Schultz, who joins us now live from Southeast 84th and Morrison. Thomas, what are you learning? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, actually, as you can see behind us, there's about a couple dozen crews here. Firefighters were able to extract somebody who was in a home as a fire started to creep inside the home. Now, this all started in a backyard when fire officials say that uh, blackberry bushes uh, started to catch on fire. It's not clear how that happened, but the fire began to creep inside the house. Somebody inside, as well as their dog, were then able to walk into a bathroom and close the door to separate themselves from the fire. That's when a police officer first showed up. He tried to enter and extract that person but was unsuccessful. Then a nearby resident tried to do the same thing. Once again, was not able to get that person out from the basement where they were. That's when Portland Fire and Rescue crews arrived on scene. Within 10 minutes of arrival, fire officials say they were able to get that person out, get them out to safety despite smoky conditions both inside the basement and the bathroom where they were hunkering down alongside a dog. Fire crew officials tell us it's incidents like this that they train for. This is what we do. It's always going to be a challenge. You know, you have emotional family members, scene side, ramping things up, but we all got it done. And that was Rick Graves, public information officer for Portland Fire and Rescue there. He says that the woman that was inside the basement just behind us was taken to the hospital. It's too early to know yet what injuries they may have, although he says, fortunately, the initial signs were good. Ashley. Thank you, Thomas. Well, the family of a two year old toddler who died from a suspected fentanyl overdose is now sharing what they know about the tragedy. A warning to those of you watching that the details here are disturbing. They tell us the girl was staying with her mother in northeast Portland when she accidentally ingested fentanyl and died. The family says the mom tried giving CPR but then left because she was afraid of being arrested. Police say they're still looking for her. Family members say she has a history of addiction and did not have custody of the toddler at the time. The mom roll, went in to go check on her and had rolled her over, and when she rolled her over, her lips were blue. I was heartbroken. That is one of the worst things that could happen to anyone. Well, the family tells us the girl's father, who also has substance abuse issues, is also missing. Meanwhile, in Clark County, the medical examiner has now confirmed that the death of a Vancouver toddler earlier this year was the result of fentanyl exposure. The 21 month old died in late March. Her mother, 38 year old Catherine Richards, was arrested last week and charged with manslaughter. She has pleaded not guilty. Well, authorities in Wasco County are looking for a suspected arsonist who's charged with starting a massive wildfire earlier this summer. The district attorney says 51 year old Christopher Meanley was squatting on a property near the community of Friend when he started what became the Larch Creek Fire. It wound up burning more than 18,000 acres, forced evacuations and led to roughly $14 million in firefighting costs. Meanley didn't show up for his scheduled court appearance yesterday, so there's now a warrant out for his arrest. 
A Washington County grand jury has indicted the man who's accused of kidnapping and killing his neighbor, Beaverton nurse Melissa Jubain. 27-year-old Bryce Schubert pleaded not guilty to all three charges against him, including first-degree murder. That charge was upgraded from second-degree murder. He's also charged with first-degree kidnapping and second-degree abuse of a corpse. Schubert is held in the Washington County Jail. His next court appearance is set for October 15th. Vancouver's Jordan Childs is not giving up her fight for an Olympic gold or bronze, excuse me, medal. She made it to the podium in Paris, but the Court of Arbitration for Sport bumped her back down to fifth place, saying her challenge came too late. Her lawyers announced yesterday that they filed a formal appeal, arguing the court refused to allow evidence that shows she did appeal by the deadline. Well, the driver who allegedly hit a 19-year-old motorcyclist last Friday and kept on driving has now been arrested and faces felony, a felony charge for leaving the scene. The woman he's accused of hitting remains in the hospital in serious condition. Alma McCarty talked with her family, who explained how her cell phone helped them track down the suspect. It's been an emotional roller coaster. It, um, it's a very hard time for not just me, but for our family. Since Friday... Trini Miranda has been by her daughter's side at OHSU. It's really hard to talk about her condition. We are in good spirits because we're leaving everything to the good Lord. Um, but it's really hard to see your kid laying in bed. 19-year-old Sarai Rodriguez fighting to overcome serious injuries after she was hit while riding her motorcycle Friday night along Southwest Farmington Road. A part of the condition for her to ride was to always be geared up, 100% geared up and she was geared up from head to toe. And from what I was told was that the helmet pretty much saved her life. Witnesses told the Washington County Sheriff's Office that a dark colored scion left the scene that night, but inside it was a clue. It was really far from where she crashed to where her phone was. Her sister Cindy used an app to track down Sarai's cell phone, locating it about a mile away inside a car with a broken window near Southwest 170th Avenue and Vincent. So like I looked in it and um, I could see her phone just there like pinging like because I was calling her phone and it was covered in glass and like I reached in and grabbed it and um, yeah that's when I took the recording to make sure that that was the car that had hit my sister. Deputies say in fact it was and arrested the 27 year old suspect Julian Borjas Diaz for felony hit and run. The victim's family pleading with drivers to be more careful, especially around motorcycles. You know, if you hit someone, it doesn't matter who who's at fault. It could be the other person at fault. It's the human thing to do is stop. Stop and make sure that that person's okay. Alma McCarty, KGW News. Rod, it's starting to feel like fall. I'm seeing a couple <laughs> leaves change, and you're also tracking some rain. Tell us about that. Yeah, this is a system that just keeps weakening. You know, we get weather miles that come in at least four times a day, most of them. And basically, every single time they come in, the rain potential goes from this to this to this to this. So here's what's on the radar. So far, we have seen light rain, especially down around Lincoln City, Depot Bay, and Newport, but nothing is really marched inland. Uh, and you folks out east, good afternoon to you. Yeah, you're still seeing scattered showers. No storms this morning, and I don't expect any. It still looks like those showers could start to become fewer in number as we go through the afternoon hours. Again, there's Newport. You get down toward Roseburg, a little bit of light rain is marching inland, but we continue to be dry as we thought we would be at noon here in the Rose City. Here's Cannon Beach Live. There may have been a little bit of light moisture there, but the, the observation says dry and 58 degrees. We know we've seen occasional light moisture, as I mentioned, Lincoln City, Newport, and this is uh, the Depot Bay camera along 101. There's downtown from the uh, Channel House. You can tell it's a little misty looking. We're sitting at 63 degrees in Portland. Increasing chances of light showers still likely at 5 o'clock. The drive home today, there will be some rain in the area. And same thing this evening, but it's not going to be much. We'll talk about the not that much rain totals and have your seven day coming up in my complete forecast. See you soon, Rod. Well, election officials in Oregon are working to make sure that hundreds of non-U.S. citizens who were accidentally registered to vote don't end up getting a ballot for the upcoming election. The Secretary of State's office revealed last week that more than 300 people, none of them U.S. citizens, were mistakenly registered to vote through the Oregon DMV. 
Election officials in Multnomah County, Washington, Clackamas, and Marion counties each got a list of names from the state and say they deactivated the registrations of anyone they couldn't verify was a U.S. citizen. They say those people will not be getting a ballot for the upcoming election. State Republicans, meanwhile, are calling for the Secretary of State to brief lawmakers as to how this happened in the first place and how to prevent mistakes like this in the future. You know, I'm shocked and it's disturbing because we are 50 days away from an election and we have yet to hear answers about how is this going to get fixed. And we need to ensure that U.S. citizens and citizens that are able to be vote are actually their vote counts. And somebody who's not a citizen doesn't have the ability to vote in our, in our election electoral process. That's what Governor Kotek weighed in saying this won't impact the upcoming election and that the DMV is taking action. Today is National Registra Voter Registration Day, so here's some dates to keep in mind. In Oregon, the deadline to register for the November election is October 15th. It's two weeks later in Washington on October 28th, unless you plan to register in person. Oregon will start mailing out ballots on October 16th, and they have to be either postmarked or placed in a ballot drop box by 8 p.m. on election night. That's November 5th.